Hi, I'm Tamta, and I just made a game development library for C++. It's called Tomlib because my name is Tamta. Very original, I know. And it was quite an interesting experience, so I would like to talk a little bit about it. What I learned, why I even decided to do this, what were the benefits, because I feel like it will be uh, interesting for other developers. First of all, uh, why C++ at all? Why do I even need C++ for game development? Uh, the thing is, a lot of game developers go with Unity a lot of the time, and that's nice, but the biggest demand for Unity right now when it comes to job opportunities is hyper-casual games. Unity is mostly used in hyper-casual games. There are exceptions, of course. Uh, Team Cherry used uh, Unity for the first Hollow Knight. Not sure if they're still doing it for the second, but they did that. Hearthstone was made with Unity. There are exceptions, but most of the market uh, where Unity is required um, they're making hyper-casual games, and this is what I found out during my job search. Whereas both AAA, AA, and also indie companies usually require C++, and especially if they're going for low-level game development, which that was another factor for me for learning C++. I really enjoy low-level development, really enjoyed getting into details of programming and computer science, so that's why I decided to make C++. But then I make my own engine. I keep saying engine. Did I say engine before? It's more like a library. Anyway, I kind of went backwards with this one. Uh, I wanted to make some projects with C++ some game development projects, obviously, and I, I was thinking about making Pong, and then I kept thinking, okay, but what engine do I make it with? Do I make an engine at all? Uh, and I did think about Raylib. I thought about not making an engine at all, just making it, you know, a bare bones Pong project, but I knew I would do, be doing this again. I know that I'm going to also be making other C++ uh, video game projects in the future, which is why I decided that, uh, fuck it, let's make a library so I can do it again. Uh, Raylib is fine, but another factor for making my own library was both the experience. Um, I learned a bunch of things, which uh, I am going to talk about in a bit, and I wanted that experience, wanted to know a little more about that low-level programming and how, how the game loop works. Uh, yeah, which is why I went with making my own library. Let's take a look at this library. Okay, so this is the GitHub repository for Tomlib. Uh, the project was made with uh, Visual Studio, so if you want to easily run and compile it, you you have to uh, clone it, clone the repository with Visual Studio. It explains right here in the section how to do that, but uh, there's also a list of included libraries, which you don't have to download them separately. They all come with the project. They are included within, if you go into Tom, Lib, and all the libraries are here. So you don't have to download anything, set anything up. If you download, if you clone the project with Visual Studio, it's already there. Everything's set up. You're ready to go. There's also some guidelines on how to use the library. And these are for if you want to use the library as a library, like you're not planning on changing the library itself. You're planning to use it as it was intended as a game development library. But of course, you can ignore all this stuff if you know what you're doing and you're planning to actually change how the library works or uh, help develop the library because this library is nowhere near done. I'm going to be actively developing it. There's a lot of uh, things I want to fix. There's a lot of features I want to add. So there's that. And some quick introduction to... Oops, didn't mean to do that, to how it all works. So yeah, all of that is there. And also an example project, the Pong project that I mentioned. We're going to have a look at that as well. But for now, let's open Visual Studio. And look at the library. So first of all, uh, one of the main things I kind of learned with this is uh, working with... Uh, okay, there were actually two things. Uh, it was working with Visual Studio and how 
game engines and game loops work. So um, I kind of learned how to make Visual Studio projects, learn how to debug in Visual Studio, learn how to search up pointers, all that stuff. Pretty important things. I also um, learned a lot on how to use Git with uh, Visual Studio. So if we run this project right now, uh, so for some reason it won't run. A couple hours later, I figured it out. Um, it had the well, first of all, the project wasn't open properly, but also it had uh, the six, uh, 32 version was selected, which, no, sorry, the other way around. The 64 version was selected when the application was made to work in, uh, the engine was made to work in 32. It's pretty easy to make it also work in 64. I'm going to be, I'm going to do that in a bit, probably very soon. But anyway, it works now if you play uh, the... not play, I guess, run the application. Here it is. This is what you get without any code. Uh, but I was saying making this project taught me to set up, set up Visual Studio projects. Uh, one of the things I learned that, uh, I wasn't actually planning for this first project and I was planning to add it later on is that the dependencies for this are all inside the project. So this project, use, the Tom uses uh, SDL, TT, SDL and SDLTTF, and they're both included here and they're both set up. So if you download it, like I said before, no, you don't need to set anything up. It'll automatically be set up and you can immediately run the application as soon as you select the 32-bit version because it doesn't work in 64 and it sets you to 64. Uh, again, I think I got a hang of Git while doing this project a little better as well. The fact that um, there's UI for Git in Visual Studio has helped a little bit because previously I've just been doing Git from CMD. But this has its own Git UI, which is very helpful and actually very easy. I didn't think it would be as easy as it was. Uh, if you're like, why the hell? Do I care about Visual Studio? Again, if uh, Visual Studio is like the best tool for C++, especially in game development, it's extremely useful. Um, not Visual Studio code, that's important. This is Visual Studio. I am also using, I think it's called desktop development with C++. Let me check. So this module, desktop development with C++. And yeah. This working on this helped me get a hold of that. And another thing I learned is the game loop. So if we go into engine CPP, I'm not going go to go through all of the files in the project. You can do that yourself. You can open up the project on GitHub and check out the example project and that'll help you get a hang of things. But, and there's, I think the comments, and there's pretty good comments. They explain everything for me. I don't need to do that. I'm just gonna talk about really quickly what I want to talk about. So this is the main game loop. This is a uh, start and this is init. And the start function is this one. And it runs before init for a very important reason. Uh, init creates a window right here. So, and init needs to have the title, the width and the height of the window defined. So if start was called after in it, I wouldn't have been able to do this. I wouldn't have been able to go Tom um, window create, and then we can pass pass in a title, a width and the height. I think it's 400 by 400 by default. I'm going to pass in 1,280 by 720. And here we go, we have a bigger window and the title of the window is test. And if I didn't pass this... Then it would be a small 400 by 400 window and the title would be untitled. These are the default settings. Um, then this, this is the start, this is the actual loop. So while Tom is running, uh, we have event handling. We're not using this, right? I can delete this. Didn't notice that. Uh, 
we can handle events, which, surprise, surprise, handles events. Then there is the rest of the update loop. We get events, then we update, then rendering. So this just after rendering something in with the help of SDL, this is just drawing a clear color, which will make sure that there's always a clear color in the background, clear black. Then the draw function, which is this function, it just in here, we write everything that we want to render to the screen and then present after you render everything, you have to present uh, the scene to the renderer. And then SDL delay to get a delay between frames and then this will keep going on and then you destroy everything when you get out of the loop. So that's the main loop. I have a example project ready. Let me open it up. It's a little hard to play with just one person. Ooh, that's way loud. Hang on. Let's do it like this. There we go. Player two, one. Press enter to try again. Uh, that's... That's that. And we have most of the code in this main function. Everything here is documented as well. This src file, the source, uh, not file, folder, is all of the uh, code connected to this specific project. So this is all for Pong, right? This is not part of Tom. It is not present in the other project here, as you can see, it, it's not here because again, it's a part of Tom. Same for, for fonts, sounds, and that's it. Just fonts and sounds. That's all I wanted to show for now. I also want to say that if you feel like it's way too in intimidating to make this from scratch on, on your own, please feel free to contribute to the Tom library. I would be very thankful. I definitely have a lot of things planned for this. I want to add a lot of features. For now, my number one desired feature is making the fun functions in main actual callbacks. And what that means is uh, essentially they're just like regular functions right now, which means that if we get rid of one of them, for example, we don't have a update function at all, the game won't even run. So, because update is uh, declared, but not defined. So I want to make them actual callbacks to prevent this. I have no idea how to do that. I, I know callbacks, but like how this applies in this situation, um, no idea. As a byproduct of that, you also can't create a second file, which calls the update function, because look at this. So if I call cout update here as well, we should get an error. Here, because we have essentially two definitions of the update function, which is not how it's supposed to work. We need to define uh, update in separate uh, files because this essentially blocks us from creating a timer plugin for game development because the timer would need its own update function. So yeah, that's like the number one thing that I want to fix. Uh, other things are making functions safer. So for example, this, if we go into tom.h, which by the way, tom.h is like a mega header with all of the Tom uh, modules defined. It has subclasses, so for example, input, response for uh, input, window is the window, etc. But anyway, we have a window in it, right? And we can, essentially, you don't need to call window in it from outside of the class, but we can, which is a bad thing. Outside of the Tom class, I mean. So if I just call uh, window in it, I can do that, which I don't like because we'll never need to call this. The, the engine does it behind the scenes and the, the user doesn't need to access it. 
And there's a lot of problems like that, but I'm not sure how to do that because I feel like if I made it inaccessible, it would also make this inaccessible, right? The void create, which needs to be accessible because that's what that's how we set our window parameters. Also, another thing on my list is uh, actually all of these are listed in the GitHub repository right here under issues. So if you're curious or if you want to try it out, any of this, uh, you can go ahead, of course. If you feel like Tom would be useful for you, please check out the, the repository. I I worked for the, on this for quite a while. I hope it's useful for you. I worked really hard on documentation and comments. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully you find this useful. Uh, I'm definitely going to be updating it and there are more projects coming up soon. Uh, also, if you don't feel like, uh, if you feel like this kind of thing is too complicated for you, but you still want to learn C++, the Pong example of projects is pretty simple and you can just ignore all of the Tom parts. So basically treat it like an engine and not think too hard about the backend if you're just starting out in C++. And Pong++, which is the Pong project, can help you get started with C++. Just like ignore all of this, this, and this, because these two are also part of the engine. Anyway, if you find any of this useful at all, please check up the GitHub repositories. I hope you do. And yeah, that's all. Bye.